Today's project is to turn this stuff into this. The cage gets filled with rocks and a pot plant gets sat on top. This is being built for a friend and yes, it's garden art, just trivia. I've drawn the basic duck components and uh, put it on paper and I can use this as a template to draw onto the steel. But first I'll make the cage and the base. This is a bit of light gauge steel mesh that I bought from Bunnings. With all four sides cut out, it's time to stick them together with the welder. I'm just using a gasless flux core for this job. And because it's so light gauge, it's very easy to blow through. So just tackety tack does the job. The benefit of the gasless flux core is that it burns through the galvanizing without any problem. Unlike the TIG welder, it's very forgiving for um, steel that's either dirty, a little bit rusty, or has galvanizing on it. It's also good for doing those fiddly jobs where you need one hand to hold the material and one hand for the welder. And the final benefit is that it's cheap. Don't need any gas. Now that the cage is welded together, it's time to cut that checker plate in half and then weld the cage to the bottom of the checker plate. Oh, by the way, I need to mention again that I'm just a backyard tinkerer, not skilled in anything that I'm doing here. I'm just self-taught and this is for fun. My cutting wheel is almost worn out and it, so it doesn't quite cut through the steel, but a little bending does the job. And a 40 grit flap disc on the grinder cleans up those sharp edges nicely. Now I'm tacking the mesh to the checker plate. And because the steel mesh is very light gauge and the checker plate is a heavy gauge, got to be careful to aim the welder at the checker plate and just touch that mesh to get a nice tack on it. You can see that I'm on off on the welder all the time because um, if the heat builds up too much, it just blows straight through that mesh. Because the base is going to get filled with rocks, I want the top of the base to be able to be removable. So I'm making four little brackets that I'm then going to um, tap a thread into. And these are going to be welded onto the top of the mesh. And then the top checker plate can be bolted on. And as you can see, I'm using my new and improved auto punch and a scribe that uses a TIG tungsten as the scriber. This works really well. A bit of cutting fluid on the drill bit always helps to drill through the steel. The drill size I'm using is the, the size for the tap that I want for an M10 bolt. Always easier to drill and tap all four holes before I cut the pieces up into four bits. One for each corner of the top of the cage. I could use the angle grinder to cut these. But I've got a cut off saw and this makes a nice straight cut. Okay, progressing well. Got my four little bits that are going to be welded into the corners. Just like that. And here they are already welded on. Ready for the top checker plate to be set on top. Got the holes already drilled for the bolts that will go through and hold that top in place. I 
I'm using 1.6mm mild steel for the ducts and I'm using a whiteout pen to mark around the templates because I found that the whiteout is the easiest to see when you're using the plasma cutter. My plasma cutter is just a cheap um, Chinese model that I bought off eBay, but it works really well and it's been going for a number of years without a problem. Like all plasma cutters, it just uses compressed air with the electricity to create the arc. And it's just a matter of tapping on the steel to start the arc and then holding it just above the steel to cut through. The plasma cutter is such a marvellous invention for us hobbyists. Now it's time for the duck bodies. As there's no friction involved when you're using a plasma cutter, the biggest challenge is to hold your hand steady to follow that line. The plasma cutter leaves dags on the back of the cut, as you can see here, but they're easily removed. You can actually um, knock them off, but, but I want to um, grind the edges smooth anyway, so I just use a 40 grit flap disc, and that uh, both smooths the line out and takes that dag off. Perfect. A bit of bending gives the wings a little bit more character and makes it look like the ducks are flying. So just a bit of bending on the bench does the job. I'm going to weld one set of wings with the bend down and one set of wings with the bend up. Again, because the steel is fairly thin, a series of short tack type welds ensures I don't blow through the steel. There we go, one duck completed. Complete with wings and tail. These ducks are designed to weather and rust when they're outside, so I've just roughed up the surface to give them a head start. Now with my rudimentary um, bender in the vise, I can bend up the 10mm rod that the ducks are going to fly from. This rod bends surprisingly easily. I've got two sets of two more holes in the top of the checker plate and underneath I've just welded an extra bit of steel because I'm going to tap a thread in this as well and the extra thickness of the steel just gives me a couple more threads for the bolts to go into. These bits of steel will be welded to the end of the 10 mil rod and the duck will sit on the other end.
So one duck is in place. Time to do the other one. Well, there you go. The job's done. This has been built for a school friend. Once it's got its rocks in, a little pot plant on top, it'll look $100. This is an easy, non-technical project, but it still took all day to build. Another day of fun in the shed.